Well, I am very, very excited. There's a very handsome Carl in the room. Um, <laughs> catastrophic uh, bushfires, relentless rainy summers and flood emergencies. It seems Australia can't really catch a break at the moment with all the wild weather. So what's causing the chaos and will it ever end? Who better to answer these pressing questions than science guru and the most handsome Carl, Dr Carl. Hey! <laughs> but, but not the smartest. No, no. Yeah, also that. Also no, that. only 110 by am well educated. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, this is an interesting topic. What, what is driving all of this extreme weather that we're seeing at the moment? Um, the background is that we're dumping 600,000 Hiroshima bombs worth of heat into the atmosphere every uh, day mm. via global warming. And then that is influencing the fact that we've got the La Nina, which is the pool of hot water off the east coast of Australia the Indian Ocean Dipole, the pool of hot water over the west coast, and then the southern annular, annular mode from Antarctica, and they're all coming together in an unfortunate situation. We've got these terrible floods in New South Wales. OK, um, what's, what's the outlook then? Is it more of the same? Uh, it depends entirely on whether we bring the carbon dioxide levels down or not. So it's like you pushing a child's swing, and the more you push it, the more extreme the movements. Mm -hmm. So 600,000 Hiroshima bombs worth of heat is a lot of energy, and so we're, getting, we're going to have more vigorous oscillations. But the other side is that we can bring the carbon dioxide levels down with today's technology. OK, so we're at, the, we're at the tail end of this, I think it's what, the third La Nina event that we've seen. Yeah. And we were talking the other day about even, like, I think it was like the south-east corner of Queensland, um, there was a fire danger. Yes. So, I mean, how is summer looking in regards to bushfires when so much of the country has seen rain? Well, it'll depend on what that pool of hot water does off the coast of Australia. If it goes away, we'll then drift into an El Nino and we could end up in a situation where 20% of all the forests burnt in Australia, which has never happened before, and where Sydney was the hottest place on Earth on the 4th of January in the year 2020. That could happen again. So we're pumping more energy into the system so the oscillations are more extreme. But the good news is that we can reverse it, but we need long-term thinking. Mm. Think of an example. You've got an eight-year-old niece. I'm making up a hypothetical niece, right? Mm. And she's gorgeous and she's wonderful and everybody loves her. And unfortunately, she's got a terrible disease and she's going to die. But you can fix it for $10,000. And life will be good. She'll be part of the family. She'll, make, she'll pay taxes. But in the short term, a funeral's only $2,000. Oh. You're better off letting her die, taking the short-term point of view financially in the short term. That's the thinking that's running. And at every stage they say, look, I know we've got these bushfires, we've got these floods, but now's not the time to talk about climate change. Mm -hmm. Let's leave it to another time. So China's putting in um, a new, a new coal-fired power station every day, right? Um, so, or well, every week, it seems. Mm -hmm. is, is what we're doing here going to make a difference when you're competing against uh, some of the pollution of, say, um, Southeast Asia? Uh, yes and no. Like, in the Second World War, we were less than 1% of the world's population. Why should we go and help fight mm. that fight? We're only 1% of the world's population. Mm. But Australia is in an ideal position. We're the only continent on Earth that has all the minerals to make electric vehicles. Mm. Mm. But we killed our car manufacturing industry. So, and also China <laughs> is pushing ahead at a much greater rate with renewables than any other rate, mm. any other country on Earth. So they're doing both at the same time. And their overall trend is giving more into renewables than the, than the other way. OK, I think we just want you to be able to tell us, Dr Carl, that everything's going to be OK. Yeah, soothing. Yeah, uh, it depends on what we do. So yeah. the fossil fuel companies knew the climate change was happening in 1977 because they'd been told by the insurance companies. Mm. They did the world's best science in climate change till 1990, then they chucked a UE. About half of all the extra carbon dioxide put into the atmosphere has been put into the atmosphere since 1990. We can reverse it with today's technology. And the money, well, it turns out that out of a world GDP, so all the countries on Earth put together earn $85 trillion. Mm. We give 8% of that as a present a subsidy to the fossil fuel companies every year. Mm. Mm. That's four times the world military budget, five times Australia's GDP, 85 times what we spend on space. We could get that money and instead use that to reverse global warming and improve the economy. There you go. I always feel like I learn something when you're talking. Um, learn lots. <laughs> no, I do, a lot. Thank you so much, Dr Carl. Lovely to see you. I love Dr. the Carl. shirt too, by the way. It's mm. spectacular. The Come double on. pockets. How many pockets do you have, Dr. Carl? I don't have any, Dr. Carl. No pockets, <laughs> but I don't need a pen because I don't write anything. <laughs> That's oh. true. He doesn't. I just talk rubbish all day. No, you're enlightening us all. <laughs> oh, don't tell him that. Oh How my sarcastic gosh. was he? No, no, no. no. <laughs> we're, we're, we're all heading towards 
in like we're going from data to information to knowledge yeah. to wisdom and enlightenment and we're all part of trying to help our lovely audience exactly mm -hmm. enlightenment I'm a little bit further away than you. <laughs> Still well, anger is growing across regional New South Wales this morning. Residents furious a pledge to raise the Wyangla Dam wall years ago hasn't been followed through. It means residents have endured four floods in the past year alone. In a moment, we'll get the latest on these floods from the SES. But first, let's meet Scott Darcy, who's just outside of Forbes. Scott, can I ask you, how angry are you? Oh, look, Ali, it's... Uh just ridiculous that we're back in this situation pretty well a full year past and I'm back still talking to you guys about this damn wall, the litigations and stuff that's going to come. Um, just something needs to be done, Ali. They've spent a lot of money in the last couple of years doing all their reports and case studies and stuff on the dam and we're back at it now. So. And that inaction, we're seeing you in a situation as you are now. Just take us through the impact that the floodwaters have had on your property and also livestock. Oh, look, at my property here, um, it's devastating. Um, I'm just waiting for everything just to go under in the next couple of days. Um, it's not my, pro like my property alone, but mostly um, everyone in the Bajirabong, Gemalong, Coronella, um, and further down towards Condo. There's going to be devastation for everywhere, even back towards the dam from Cowra and a place like Goolagong. Yeah. So I'm looking here, you've lost half your so stock. That's about $60,000 um, $60, worth of sheep. Um, fencing, it's about 100 k They're gone. Yeah. No harvest. I mean, no. I hate to ask, you're going to be able to survive this one? Uh, probably not. Um, it's going to be hard for everyone to get over this. I don't know exactly the full extent of everything that I've lost so far here on my farm, but there's farmers around our area that are just devastated 100%. Mm. Look, let's bring in uh, New South Wales SES Chief uh, Superintendent Ashley Sullivan in Forbes. Um, thank you for your time this morning. I know how busy you are on the ground. Look, I'm not sure how, you know, how you can go answering this one, but you know, had that dam not spilled, how different would the situation be right now? Uh, good morning, Ali. It is a hard question to answer, and, and my expertise is around, um, you know, flood management and emergency response. Um, uh, we are here in Forbes, where we do have a, a major flood peak impacting the town at the moment, predicted to be 10.8, um, just below that, around 10.7 metres at the moment. So, um, obviously, this is a significant um, impact on this community. Two floods within two weeks. Uh, it's heartbreaking for this community. Um, but, you know, we're obviously here to support them through this. Yep. We've got hundreds of people, um, you know, here supporting this community. So, mm. yeah, it's a tough one. Yeah, and I respect that. That's an impossible question for you to answer in the situation you are. I get that. Um, can you just give us an idea of what's happening there on the ground at the moment? You talk about their flood levels likely to break this 70-year record. Where are they at now and where are you expecting to go over the next couple of days? Yeah, so you can see the floodwaters behind me. They're, they're much higher than what they were uh, two weeks ago in the, in the major flood with a similar prediction. So um, we have uh, a, a, a gauge of about uh, 10.69 metres at the moment. So we've still got a little bit to go to the predicted peak of 10.8 metres here at Forbes. So uh, a little bit more water to come into the town and, and uh, continue to inundate properties. Uh, we are seeing large amounts of properties already inundated, three, four, maybe even 500 properties. Uh, the same properties that were inundated only two weeks ago that we just finished the, the damage assessment and the clean up in this town. And as I said, we're back into major floods. So yeah, um, yeah this community is not the only one. We have major flood warnings across the state. We've got 113 warnings current, 23 of them at emergency warning for um, significant consequence to, to many communities, right from uh, the Namoi River up around Gunnedah, mm. uh, those communities at Walgett, Lightning Ridge that have been isolated and yep. um, have been impacted for many weeks. So um, right down to the Murrumbidgee, Hay is impacting major flooding and, and then the Murray River flooding and many other rivers across New South Wales at the moment. Gosh, I tell you what, it's just so much for people and we see there with Scott thinking they're probably going to lose the farm over this because that dam wall wasn't raised. Guys, really appreciate your time this morning. Thank you, Carl. G'day, it's Ali. And Carl. Thanks for watching the Today YouTube channel. <laughs> Subscribe now for brand new videos every day and exclusive bonus clips. Ali, say please. Please? Why? Please? I don't know. <laughs>